Mr. I call the uh, Wayne County Board of Commissioners meeting to order for March 15th. Uh, our invocation today is from Vice Chairman Wayne Acock. Fire his place. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your many blessings. We ask that you be with us as we make decisions for the county. Just give us the wisdom and the, and to make the right decisions for the citizens of Wayne County. We ask that you be with the leaders of our state, and we ask that you be with the leaders of our nation, because uh, we're living in troubled times, and we just pray that they will make the right decisions. We ask that you be with our first responders, uh, our law enforcement, our fire, our EMS, uh, 911 call takers. We ask that you be with them, keep them safe. We ask that you be with our men and women in uniform. Uh, we are a military family, dear God. We have friends and neighbors that are deployed. We ask that you be with their families here back home uh, and keep them safe. And we just ask all of this in your name. Amen. And Commissioner Barbara Acock, please, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes of March 1. So move. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Okay, adjustments of the agenda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning. Um, we would like to move under special presentations, um, uh, put number two at number one, uh, and then number one, number two. And then we would like to add to our consent agenda uh, the following, and please bear with me, there's a lot that we're adding. Uh, under number six, under consent agenda, approval of CDM Smith, Michael Baker International, Timmons Group, and Withers Ravenel as on-call engineering firm for Wayne County. Uh, and again, that would be with the appropriate um, approval from our county attorney. Uh, number seven is approval for contract with ECS for environmental testing at new jail site. Number eight, approval of CDM Smith for AIA work for viable utility reserve grant program from NCDEQ, and again, that will be with final approval from our county attorneys. Uh, number eight, uh, approval of professional services contracts with Withers and Ravenel for Genoa system evaluation along with appropriate budget amendment. Again, this will be with approval of our county attorney. And we also had two budget amendments that we did add um, in consent, uh, budget number 367 and 371. Okay. And, and also when we do, there is a revision to the uh, agreement with the resolution with Wayne Community College uh, that we did place up in front of you as well. Okay, anything else? That's enough, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, uh, I do need a motion to approve the amended agenda. So moved. All right, we have a motion on the floor. All those in any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Okay. And now we go to special presentations. Commissioner Acock. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for giving me the honor and privilege of a resolution for Ms. Kate Daniels, uh, me and Ms. Daniels has already had a discussion. I am tickled to death that she uh, is moving forward, but I'm also mad with her for leaving. <laughs> but uh, do you want, let's go down. Yes, let's let do me, it. Everyone, let's go down and I'll, I'll read the resolution. Okay.
Are you ready? I will. <laughs> Resolution honoring Kate Daniels for her years of service to Wayne County and the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce. Whereas Kate Daniels became the president of the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce in May of 2013. And whereas Kate Daniels became the face of Wayne County, not only its business leaders, but the neighboring uh, towns and counties as well. Whereas Kate Daniels promoted and attended over 500 ribbon cuttings for small businesses. And whereas Kate Daniels promoted and attended over 800 community events. And where is Kate Daniels support Wayne, the county of Wayne and all of its municipalities as well as Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Where is Kate Daniels has tackled community issues, advocated for business and brought the community together through difficult and challenging times. And where is Kate Daniels did all of this more uh, while raising family with her husband, Jeremiah. Now be it Therefore, resolved by the Wayne County Board of Commissioners and on behalf of the business owners and citizens of Wayne County that March the 15th, 2022 will be Kate Daniels Day in Wayne County. And the Board of Commissioners invites every citizen to thank Ms. Daniels for her dedication to our community, given this day the 15th day of March, 2022. Thank you. team said was don't cry today <laughs> um, but thank y'all so much thank you for the opportunity to serve our chairman of the board um, Kevin Johnson is amazing but this team is amazing we're missing uh, Janet Brock with us right now but Linda Murray and Laura Landers and Michaela Alves and over 600 businesses here in Wayne County are part of our chamber um, so the really cool thing about this year is we are in our 125th year so our chamber has been a part of this community in the business community for 125 years and I'm telling you all the best is yet to come and I'm so thankful for the opportunity to have served in that role and I'm not going anywhere I'm still in Wayne County I'm still going to be promoting and um, just really appreciate the opportunity I've had to work with each of you and so many that came before you and um, great things to come for sure thank you thank you let's get it kind of matter before we proceed on uh, as everyone can tell we're having a little issue in regards to our heat and so therefore we are establishing as chair that you may remove your jackets if you feel uh, so moved because <laughs> it's hot <laughs> oh, so you I'll take my jacket off y'all can go ahead and stay hot <laughs> go ahead Mr. 
Uh, next, we do want to do our employee service pins, and we will start with one year. All right, beginning with the one year pins, Jeff Guerin with the Sheriff's Office. Wendy Kearney, DSS Income Maintenance. I'm sorry, Wendy Kearney, DSS Income Maintenance. Rosalind Hamilton, DSS Income Maintenance. Well, they're out in the hallway. <laughs> You're Rosalind? Congratulations. Matthew Crane, Public Health Administration. Matthew Crane. Matthew Crane. Dylan Corbett with the Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Shanita Sutton with the Detention Center. Joseph Brown, DSS Regular Services Administration. Kara Johnson, DSS Regular Services Administration. No. Cindy Mitchell, Facility Services. Uh, Jennifer Campos, Detention Center. Campos. Kevin Manuel, Detention Center. Manuel. And David Evans, Sheriff Office. <laughs> All right, that ends our one years. All right, Karen Peel, DSS Income Maintenance. Kelly Hankins, DSS Regular Services. Stacy Henson, EMS. Stephanie Edwards with the library. <laughs> Lady Salinas with public health. <laughs> Adore Clark with the library. Terry Bolin with DSS Administration. <laughs> Megan Wilson with the library. <laughs> and County Manager, Craig Honeycutt. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Kenneth Dupree, did you call anything? Did I call who now? Kenneth Dupree? Mm -hmm. I do not have his name, sir. Oh, okay. It was on the list I built in the agenda packet. That's why I met you there. Oh, this is a different one that they give me once they get confirmation, sir. Got you. Okay. Oh. All right, our 10-year pins, beginning with Cheryl Jackson, DSS Administration. <laughs> Betsy Hood with the Tax Department. Michael Evans, Facility Services.
Montrina Boney, DSS Income Maintenance. Philip Durham with the Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Faye Warren, Public Health Maternity Care Project. <laughs> Kimberly Hammond, DSS Regular Services Administration. That concludes our 10 year. We'll move to 15 year. William Cornell with the Sheriff's Office. Zachary Kinlaw with the Sheriff's Office. Ms. Allison Spate with finance, who is not here. She's at a conference, so we'll make sure she gets that. Janice can accept it. There we go. Lisa Stewart, DSS Income Maintenance. <laughs> Alex Westbrook, EMS. Prudencia Moore, DSS Regular Services Administration. Casey DeGricci Roberts, Public Health Dental. And now on to our 20 years. begin with Pam Magliochetti with DSS Administration. <laughs> Delmas Cox with the Landfill. <laughs> Wendy Bailey, Public Health Maternity Care Project. Nanette Sutton, EMS. <laughs> Angie Barnes, EMS. And Cynthia Blizzard, EMS. All right, and our final two um, are both 25-year pins, and we'll begin with Miss Bonnie Krause, Public Health Administration. And Mr. Steve Stroud, Inspections. Wow. No 30 year? All right. <laughs> Y'all have a good day. Take care. All right, our next item on our agenda is a motion to approve April as Children's and Families Month proclamation. So moved. We're great. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us here this morning. And it is actually very important that all of those folks were just recognized because they are important to the fabric of protecting children in Wayne County every single day. So let's give all of them a round of applause for their service. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa Harrell. I'm the Mental Health Services Manager at Wages for our Head Start and Early Head Start programs. Um, I'm delighted to be here this morning, though, as the voice and representation for a new group that is pressing forward in Wayne County called Wayne Cares. Um, I'm going to ask my Vanna White assistant here this morning. This is Shelly Willis with the Partnership for Children. She's going to be giving each of you a packet um, you. with the information that I'll be going over because it will be like drinking from a fire hose, and I know that we have lots on the agenda so you can review it later. But Wayne Cares um, stands for Coalition on Abuse, Resiliency, Education, and Support. And this group actually grew out of the work that was already in uh, here in Wayne County to recognize every April as Child Abuse Awareness Month. And while that is a very noble cause, what we feel like would be a better effort would be to support children and families all year long because child abuse and prevention are important topics not just in the month of April, but should be waived and done every single single day of the year. So what we um, plan to do, our mission statement, is to lessen the impacts of multi-generational trauma by building support through awareness, education, and advocacy. And our vision for Wayne County is to be a resilient and compassionate community where everyone feels safe and has a sense of belonging. And I know in a time where we feel divided on many issues, whether it's political or other issues, I know that there is one thing that we can all get behind in this room, and that is the protection and love of children. Uh, no one will argue, I hope, with that particular uh, point that we have. So we are very excited about this work. Um, we've been meeting for approximately a year now. We have a robust um, group of folks at the table that represent every type of agency and community support here in Wayne County. However, we are open and ready for as many people who would like to get on board with us. Um, part of what we're doing this <coughs> month when we move into April, we will be doing those traditional things, and you have a list in front of you. And for those of you watching online, or in the room, you can certainly go to the Wayne County Partnership for Children or Wages website to get this information. Um, the traditional color to support children um, in child abuse protection is blue, so we ask in the month of April that you wear blue, except for on April 8th, which is Purple Up Day, where we will recognize our military families and children who, as you said earlier, we are a military community, and in these challenging times, we want to stand behind our children and families, and so that'll be Purple Up Day. But the rest of the month, wear blue every single day so get your closets ready um, the other things that we will be doing we will be showing the movie um, it's a documentary of if you have not seen this it is a must for you to do that recognizes the impacts of trauma on the life of children we think about protecting children but trauma is very prevalent in our society two out of three people in this room have experienced one adverse childhood experience that's a lot of trauma and that doesn't stop when you turn 18 that transitions and transforms into every piece of your life and so we have law enforcement in this room. We have judicial services represented. We have folks in this room in public health and who support substance abuse. If we really want to negate all the problems that we are dealing with daily in this community, we must start by ad advocating and addressing childhood trauma because it is at the root of every single social issue that we want to uh, um, deal with here in Wayne County and globally as well. So if you have not seen this film, you will have opportunities. Um, the University of Mount Olive is hosting us on April the 11th at 6.30 p.m. April the 14th, Wayne Community College will be hosting a viewing at 6.30 p.m. We have a virtual showing online for those who are unable to attend in person, and that will be 6.30 p.m. And the Paramount Theater at 11.30 a.m. and a box lunch can be included. So if you want to grab a lunch and come and watch with us that day, that will be at 11.30 with the film starting at 12, and that is on April the 28th. Um, if you would like to view the film in the privacy of your own home, you can reach out to me or the Partnership for Children, and we can provide you with a link to be able to watch that and process how important it is to address and protect children. And so at this time, I'm going to read the proclamation for um, this month. Whereas our children are our most valuable resources and will shape the future of Wayne County, Whereas the quality of parenting, caregiving is one of the most powerful protective factors for children, our community recognizes the long-term value of offering as many services to support positive environments for children and families. Whereas Wayne County is the home to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, and we recognize that our military force or presence comes not just from those who wear the uniform, but from their families who also serve on behalf of our country. Whereas April is month of the military child and military children make daily sacrifices so their parents can keep our nation safe, we must match their sacrifice with a commitment to provide the full support of our communities. 
Whereas April the 2nd through the 8th is National Week of the Young Child, where access to affordable, high quality education and health care for every child in our community, particularly in the first five years, is vital to building a strong community, state and nation. Whereas our community recognizes the tireless efforts of those in Wayne County who work in various agencies, nonprofits, child care facilities and schools that offer care and services to families as we move towards creating a safe, healthy and equitable community for our children and families. Whereas April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month to recognize that child abuse and neglect is a serious problem affecting every segment of our community and finding solutions requires input and action from everyone. Whereas child abuse can have long-term psychological, emotional, and physical effects that have lasting consequences throughout a lifetime. Whereas prevention remains the best defense for our children and families and effective child abuse prevention activities succeed because of community collaborations. Whereas communities must make every effort to promote programs and activities that create strong and thriving children and families, these efforts create protective factors, which are conditions that reduce or eliminate risk and promote the social, emotional, and developmental well-being of children. Whereas we acknowledge that we must work together as a community to increase awareness about child abuse, generational trauma, and early childhood education. This morning, I ask the county commissioners to bless this proclamation and declare April as Children and Families Month. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the proclamation? So moved. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, thank you. Are you unanimous? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next item on the agenda is a presentation on We Dig It Ag, Ag Days. Well, there's Mr. Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Me again. I'm sorry. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Thank you so much. I'm not going to sit up here and steal the thunder, but I do want to introduce Emily Odom. Her and her husband, JR, have been instrumental in our We Dig It Ag Days. I think a lot of y'all have been out there. If you're not, we're going to invite you to come for sure. But uh, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I don't want to steal any thunder. I do want you to know that uh, I think we've been doing this nine years. Or I, Yeah, we were talking about it earlier. We can't exactly remember what date, but we, we feel sure it's been about nine years. About nine years. Of course, we had two years that COVID affected us. But... The y'all did approve years ago to sponsor this, and it goes through my budget. So y'all are a sponsor of this program. I did want you to know that. So anyway, without further ado, Emily Odom. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how you're spending your money. So, <laughs> um, so you don't, if you don't know me, I'm Emily Odom. I'm here on behalf of Wayne County Farm Bureau, specifically today, the Young Farmer and Rancher Group who puts on this event. Um, we're gonna be doing We Dig It Ag Day at my farm, it's Odom Farming Company in Rosewood, um, on April 7th. It's going to be from like 8 to 2, and we're going to have all of the second grades in Wayne County out. It's going to be about 1,500 kids, plus um, speakers from all of the high schools, um, Goldsboro High School included. We're having their HOSHA group, all the FFAs from the county out to be speaking to these kids. They're going to rotate from 12 stations that kind of encompass all of Wayne County agriculture and learn about what we do in our county learn about what farmers do, where their food comes from, where their fiber comes from, and um, what they see when they're riding around in the county every day watching tractors go by. Um, we partner with a lot of different groups with this, Smithfield, Extension, um, the Beekeepers, Forest Service, a lot, of, a lot of folks come together to make this possible. Um, we provide lunch boxes for the kids to take home, so um, they're able to share these information with their parents and family members, and we just think it's a great day. Um, like Kevin said, we were talking, I think it's been about nine years we've been doing this. On our farm, we're an agritourism farm, so we invite people onto the farm to experience farm life, I guess, because that's fun. Um, anybody who was out there um, Saturday with me all night long burning hay bales in my orchard would not have loved to experience farm life that night. That was no fun. Um, but, but the day-to-day -day normal stuff, people get to experience. And we noticed when people were coming to our farm that they really didn't realize where their food was coming from. Um, we kind of take for granted 
that we live in a somewhat rural community and everybody sees farms all the time, but that's not necessarily true. Um, we were having kids come in from Goldsboro that may not get that opportunity. And we had potatoes planted and they did not realize that that's how potatoes grew. They thought you just got them from the grocery store. And I've had grown adults that did not realize that hamburger comes from cows. So <laughs> that's where we got this idea. JR said, you know, I used to do something like this when I was in high school in FFA. So um, we took it on, we partnered with Farm Bureau and they took the reins and we got this thing planned. And our hope is to at least have the kids have one opportunity to come out to a farm, meet a farmer, figure out where it's coming from. And so eventually they'll take that with them their whole life, especially um, in this time where our supply chains are being less global and more local. Um, at least they'll kind of have a, a point of contact to, to help figure out where all this stuff is coming from. <laughs> So that's going to be on April 7th. We'd love to have all of you guys out there. Um, it's going to be a great day. We usually have a good lunch. So we definitely love to see you there. We have any questions? Great program, and we really appreciate you uh, sponsoring this and yep. putting it on. I know it takes a lot of effort on your part, but it is, it's, it's, it's really appreciated. Yeah, we appreciate it. It's kind of like a well old machine at this well, point. There you go. So. <laughs> any other comments? I, I've been twice. But two of the girls anyway, so I know it's nine years because Caroline's in 11th grade. Yeah. <laughs> Very said, good program. What's, what, what time of the morning is it starting? So we have we split the second graders into two batches just, you know, because 1,500 at one time is a lot. So they come on, I think they're going to start getting there about 8.30, and then they'll be there for about an hour and a half, and then we'll have a short break, and then the next group comes on, and they'll be leaving by 2. So you got several opportunities to yeah, come out. Yeah, make it out there about noon time. That's there what you Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, I think we're gonna do um, like barbecue and maybe pulled chicken yeah, sandwiches. Yeah, 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 so yeah. come on out. Bring a coat because it's you do never food. know. We have <laughs> we have roasted and burned out there. So then we started like providing water for the kids, and then we it was 20 degrees one year, and we were all in bib there. overalls and yeah. freezing our butts off. So yeah, I remember you never that. know. <laughs> I know. I can. All, I always say you can always count on it. Cold spells to at least Easter. So, and this is before Easter, so you never know. So say that, say no that a little bit louder. Hmm? Say that a little louder. You can always count on cold spells to at least Easter. So don't and do we a have lot a lot of planning Easter. until after. Absolutely. <laughs> Otherwise, you're up in your orchard at so, 2 a.m. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, I had a little issue with my garden last week. <laughs> <laughs> He had a beautiful yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. I covered it up. I mean, I about like you out there burning hay bales. I'm not, wasn't doing it that. Was, <laughs> but anyway. It was an experience. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. For, for our non-farmers mm -hmm. um, and people like myself who are a little illiterate to mm -hmm. farm life, What's what, what would the kids experience? Is it going to be any strawberries at that time of the season? So, no, strawberry season in our part of North Carolina goes from about mid April to um, maybe Memorial Day, maybe later, you know, just weather dependent. So, we won't quite have strawberries ready, but we have 12 stations. So, we have like a hayride where they can ride through equipment and see. We've got dairy goats. We're going to have dairy goats from Holly Grove come out so the kids will actually see the goats. We're going to have beef cows there. Um, sweet potatoes, row crops like corn, soybeans, cotton, wheat. Um, we have an ornamental horticulture station um, for our landscapers and stuff that are out there. Am I missing? Yeah, Forest Service. They're going to be there. Um, we have a forestry station because all of that's part of ag, and we have a bee station. So usually we have some folks from the beekeepers come out and bring observation hives so the kids can see the bees because they are vitally important to our produce. Um, I can't remember how many bites every a bee you know, produces, but all your strawberries, anything like that has to be pollinated, and honeybees are usually our first line of defense. So all kinds of stuff. And the local FFA chapters help. That's what we love so much about it, because at these stations, um, the local FFA chapters and the HOSHA chapter from Goldsboro, they're the ones doing the speaking. Um, so it's kind of like a double. They're, the kids are learning from the older kids who are learning how to public speak and present. Um, when I grew up, my grandma used to put me in speech competitions and stuff like that, and I hated it. And now I'm so grateful because <laughs> I have to speak a lot, and you don't think about that. Um, 
you know, when you're doing it at that time. But so it gives them opportunity to teach and, and speak and be leaders, which is what FFA is all about. So, and even the Goldsboro kids, they're getting, um, we do a nutrition station. So we're trying to help them make better choices and learn about which foods are better. So they play a game with them. So it's interactive. They're not just sitting there. A lot of this, they, they've, the kids are really inventive and they've come up with all kinds of fun ways for these kids to learn. So. We love it. Okay, well, thank you again so All much. Right. Well, I have thank these you. invitations. Can I leave them with you guys? Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, Mr. Honeycutt, I think you've got an introduction. I do. I uh, would like to uh, introduce um, uh, Amanda Justice. Uh, Amanda is our new uh, travel and tourism director. Uh, for the city of Goldsboro, for Wayne County. Come, don't be bashful. Come on up. Uh, uh, we are very lucky and very uh, pleased to have Amanda. She went through a really good interview process. Uh, we did that with the city. Uh, but a little background on Amanda. Uh, she most recently served as tourism director for Duplin County for the last nine years, along with overseeing the Duplin Events Center for the last three years. She has over a decade of hospitality industry experience, ranging from operations to regional group sales. Prior to work in Duplin County, Amanda worked for ZMC Hotels here in Goldsboro and is originally from Kinston. She is married to Chris Justice and they reside in Duplin County on a small hobby farm. But we appreciated Amber's um, um, or, or, excuse me, uh, my wife is Amber, my, uh, Amanda, uh, uh, her willingness to, uh, uh, sorry about that. That's uh, Captain Clark Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, her, her willingness to, to when, when the job was open, and she really just blows away during the interviews of, of her knowledge, her background, and really uh, her experience of what she can do uh, with all the assets that we do have here in Wayne County and Goldsboro. Uh, to really move travel and tourism forward. So, with that said, let me introduce him. Uh, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> we have to put it with him. Uh, uh, I, okay. so like I said, I've been called work, so it's, it's fine. nothing new. All right, the mic's yours. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say thank you for um, having me this morning, and um, I'm about almost three, four weeks in, so I'm really excited um, for the opportunity to um, see how far we can take travel and tourism in the city and the county. Well, great. Great. Well, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Well, great. Thank you. All right. Our next item on is unfinished business. Um, possible motion to proceed with the design schematics on the proposed Wayne County fuel station and appropriate budget amendment. Um, as the board is aware, we've been working on this. Um, Wayne, or Wayne County does not have a fuel system in the county, so uh, I think we've all the issues that we've had with ice storms and, and supply chain issues, uh, we felt like that we needed to have our own supply of fuel so we can make sure all of our emergency services can operate. So we've been working on this for about a year, uh, trying to first, it had to be rezoned. We're looking at it at the uh, Clingman uh, site where facility services is. We had to get it rezoned. We have to look at site plans. Uh, but what we're at the point now is it will start costing us a little bit of money for design work. Uh, we want to make sure that we get the right size tanks in, uh, that we get the right size system in. Uh, but we wanted to really bring it in front of the board, uh, basically saying that, that we want to go to design schematics and then that would include the appropriate budget amendment. Okay. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Yes. I'll make a motion that we proceed with design schematics of the proposed Wayne County Fuel and Station with the appropriate budget amendment. Okay. We uh, have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? I, I think we're moving in the right direction. Uh, this, this subject came up several years ago, and uh, we had other priorities that we had to put in front of it. But uh, uh, many, many years ago, Wayne County had a fuel uh, Distribution center uh, at what was the old hospital or to DSS and Health building now, but uh, it had to be it, it was obsolete and, and the county had to do away with it. But uh, I think we're moving in the right direction for this because you know in, in the times that we're living in now, uh, we never know when there's going to be a fuel shortage, and uh, we certainly got to keep our uh, 
first responders, our law enforcement, uh, EMS, we've, we've got to make sure that they are readily available all the time. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, um, I know I've harped on this for a while, but I appreciate I've, I've, I've worried Chip to death, I know, and, uh, uh, and Craig, but I appreciate the uh, the efforts and, and moving it forward. I mean, this is assured that we've got adequate fuel supply, you know, for a short-term uh, event anyway. So I appreciate you working. And, and I, again, thanks for Commissioner Gurley. We appreciate him pushing this forward and, and what <coughs> he's done and Noel, you know, trying to make sure that we do this and do this correctly. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. Okay. Appointment committee. Yes, sir. We do have some appointments. And I have our vice chair of the appointment committee, Mr. Gurley, to read the list. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've got the following. We met this uh, this morning and last or two weeks ago, and uh, we submit the following. A motion to appoint John Gardner to the Belfast Town Sanitary District. Uh, uh, filling the vacancy of the late Fred Newcomb as requested by their board, and that's in form of a motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay. Also, uh, we have a motion to reappoint Eddie Pitzer to the Wayne County Animal Control Advisory Board. Uh, that's in form of a motion as well. All right, a motion is on the floor. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay. Uh, next on the list is the motion to appoint Johnny Bryant to the Wayne County Planning Board, and that's filling the vacancy of Mr. Hobart Yates, and that's in form of a motion. Okay, we have a motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Uh, next, we... Next, we have the motion to uh, have a motion to appoint uh, Keith Harris to the Wayne County Board of Health, as requested by their board, and that's in form of a motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Okay. Uh, next, we have a motion to appoint Pillar Parks and Elizabeth Orca to the Wayne County Latino Council, and that's in form of a motion. Okay, a motion on the floor. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. And last but not least, um, uh, we have a motion to appoint Lyman Peden to the to replace the late Zeb Musgrave uh, as the fire commissioner for Pate Town Volunteer Fire Department. That's requested by their board of directors, and that's in form of a motion. Okay. Motion on the floor. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by raise your right hand. And I'll turn it back over to our former chair. Mr. Chair, that concludes our appointments. And we appreciate the efforts of the appointments committee because that undoubtedly is a full day's work. <laughs> Thank you so much. Two days, actually. Two days. Okay. <laughs> All right. We now move to our consent agenda, and we went over these items uh, at our agenda meeting. Uh, so I'd entertain a motion to approve. So All right. We have a motion on the floor. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raise your right hand. And we move now to new business. Mr. Honeycutt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, is Doc Pfeiffer? Yes, Doc Pfeiffer and her team is here. Um, uh, again, uh, uh, the discussion of parcel approval of Wayne County to be the funding source for two years for the four-year SCIF funding for the new Center for Industrial Technology and Engineering building at Wayne Community College and appropriate budget amendment. Uh, again, this would allow the county uh, to upfront uh, the community college uh, their skip funding. Uh, Dr. Parker, please, please come up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you explain it, Dr. Parker. So, but welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you, sir. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for considering um, this item. As um, you are very aware, we are in the business of promoting um, economic development through workforce development. We have an opportunity to build a freestanding um, Applied Technology Center. We're calling it our site or Center for Industrial Technology and Engineering. And we have received some funding from the state um, in the form of SCIF funding. 
and that allocation is over a four-year period of time but right now we are only able to receive two years of that and that is um, 9.149 million dollars half of that funding um, we are, do not have access to until their next um, biennial budget so we are asking if the county can um, upfront us those funds. It will be on a cash flow basis. As we begin to build this project, we will repay those funds as we receive funds, unless for some reason the next General Assembly decides not to give us half of that funding. <laughs> I know. But give a little bit of explanation in regards to some of the job skills that will be Absolutely, in this. absolutely. So some of the um, programs that we will house in that building will be mechanical engineering, industrial systems, um, mechatronics, HVAC. We are looking also at putting some of our short-term training. We realize that business and industry sometimes needs trained workers in a very short period of time. So short-term training will be integrated into that building. Um, we feel that um, we most definitely can impact um, students and our business and industries by providing a state-of-the-art facility to provide this type of applied tech training to our students um, who will then become um, citizens of hopefully Wayne County and um, provide to our tax base and, and overall benefit the county as a whole. And the other thing I would like a little bit, uh, let's yes, give an boy to the foundation and their, their role in this. Absolutely. So our foundation is also very committed to this project. They have um, committed a million dollars of their own funds uh, and are currently in a capital fund uh, project. Um, which we will soon bring out to the public for another $1.5 million. So there is investment um, from our own foundation, and obviously we will use money from um, the state to complete this project. Um, I question you a great deal today, but I appreciate it. I think the public fine. needs to that's know that fine. really there's a, a lot of, there's a team effort in order to bring this, this it, project. It, you know, and including the county as a whole, because you support our buildings and our infrastructure. Um, and as I shared with you yesterday, you know, the county has always been good to Wayne Community College. Um, and I will assure you that we will be good stewards of your funds as we go along. Um, you know, there will be an agreement that we'll have to sign, and I totally understand that. Um, but please know there, there is a chance if we get um, year three and four, we will not use a dime of your funds. Okay. Are, are we getting a, uh, a mortgage on this building? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Dr. Yeah. Pfeiffer. Yes, sir. You, while you're up here, uh, mm -hmm. you may not have the exact figures, but I'm pretty sure you remember them. Can I, can I, let the board know and, and uh, our viewers is watching where Wayne Community College stands in the in the co Wayne Community co uh, and the co college uh, uh, facility. I mean the, 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 the 58 community colleges in the state. Kind of where Wayne County ranks in the state and and, and in the nation. Well, we uh, of the 58 community colleges. Right. Um, we're a medium-sized college, but we are um, relatively a very progressive college in that in the funding that we'll receive from SCIF, we're probably up in the um, top 15 of the amount of funding that we're going to get for this project. Um, we have very strong retention um, rates, very strong graduation rates. I'm not 100% sure what the other question that you were asking. Well, and we're in, in nationally, I mean, not nationally? nationally. Okay, uh, nationally. Wayne community is recognized nationally. Outside. Yes, we have. We have have been recently in the um, Aspen um, ranks the colleges. We are a top 150 college for Aspen um, in the nation. In 2020, we received a student success award from the um, American Association of Community Colleges. So we were first in that, that I pride myself on that because that is what we are about. We are about student success. We have been a bellwether finalist. The bellwether um, consortium looks at colleges that have progressive programs that can be replicated at other colleges, focused on student success, um, especially for those that are African-American, Hispanic, or for low-income um, students. We have been a finalist of that in the last three years. So we are very much a nationally recognized institution that have strong programs to help our students 
be successful both on the curriculum side and on the short-term training side. And, and also, uh, Lane Community College has got a, now a, a fantastic working relationship with the Wayne County Public Schools and also with the University of Mount Olive. I mean, because you know, all three of those groups has got it, it's got the same objective is to educate our, our students. Absolutely. So we are sitting at the table and deciding how we can impact, um, bring programs to our students, introduce them to different career fields, um, and we are definitely sitting around the table as a team um, between the ent the three entities. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. if I can elaborate uh, as you did yesterday on the um, short term. Uh, classes or certificates, the, um, uh, the apprenticeships, uh, and, and working with the businesses and all that we talked about yesterday. To kind of let everybody know, because a lot of people do, are not aware of the short, in fact, I wasn't aware of the short-term classes. As, as you know. Right. If you look at our campus, we basically have two different sides. We have a curriculum side where you think about students coming to us to get degrees, diplomas, certificates. But we also have what we call a workforce training side. and. We also have a transitional program. Transitional programs are for students who have not achieved a high school diploma through a traditional route, who have had to stop out for whatever reason that interrupted their life. Um, so we have transitional programs. But our work, short term workforce training programs um, provide um, short term skills. For example, instead of coming into a welding program for an entire year to get a diploma, maybe somebody who is working full time who knows how to stick weld but wants to do a MIG or a TIC. Um, TIG welding for the industry that they're working at can come in and get that in a seven to eight week period of time, go back to industry, now have that skill and maybe um, receive higher wage because of that. Because of that, we have, like for example, our certified nursing assistant. We know that need is very great in our, our um, allied health career fields. Um, so that training is a 16-week training or an accelerated eight-week training. So an individual can come to us with a high school diploma at appropriate reading level, because there is re it is a reading intensive, and be able to um, sh finish that training in either eight weeks or 16 weeks, and then go out and have a job that they can um, receive a life-sustaining wage and support their families in Wayne County. We have a multitude of different careers um, that you can come and do that. We also do a lot of um, public safety training through our short-term workforce, our firemen, all their updates, the Firemen's Academy. We have a lot of law enforcement officers who come to us for some short-term training. So there's a multitude. We, we hit business areas, public safety, allied health, um, industrial systems, and applied technology. So it's a variety of short-term training. I feel our institution can grow by providing more short-term training to the students that we serve in Wayne County and those that come to us from outside Wayne County for that training. So we are going to put an emphasis, and my vision is to grow that. But to grow that, I need to have the space to be able to do that. As I told you guys yesterday, I need to put my money where my mouth is. If I say I'm going to grow short-term training, I need to give them the space to be able to do that and um, increase that enrollment and provide the skilled and highly trained individuals to move into our workforce in Wayne County. And you also provide the, uh, one of the courses, the truck driver. Sort of we also have truck drivers. That is something that because we knew that there was such a high demand, um, we moved into truck driver training probably about a year ago. Um, <coughs> And it has been very successful. Our students are coming out right, before, right as soon as they graduate. They can make approximately fifty-five thousand dollars right out of the gate. Uh, right now, that training is going from anywhere from twelve to sixteen weeks, depending the format. If you have to come in the evenings and weekends, it takes a little bit longer. Um, but we are also looking to expand that training too. And I, I have a relationship with several businesses in town that are into uh, shipping or your delivery type business, and they are having a that, yes. That's a big. That's a big issue. Yes. Yes. I have great hopes. It's not that an old man's job. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I understand that. Um, we have great hope um, building this um, site building that you're um, going to assist us with. Um, if you um, <coughs> vote um, in the affirmative to be able to do that, my next goal is to put a real truck driving pad on that campus so we can do um, to expand truck driving. We, right now, we're using um, a gravel parking lot to do that. Right, any, other, any other comments? Mr. Chairman. Yes. 
I would like to say thank you, Patty, for the presentation, Dr. Pfeiffer, for the presentation yesterday. Very informative. Uh, like uh, a lot of you know, I was a uh, production control department head at Cooper Standard for 17 and a half years. My former plant manager, Jim Pry, reached out to me yesterday and he <clears throat> done this quote, does my heart good to see this program put into place? Because in manufacturing, you know, for years when I was there, it was hard to find skilled labor to come in. The company themselves done a lot of training and uh, a lot of education, but it's gonna be great to have these students come in already trained, mm -hmm. ready to go, for these companies. Uh, Mr. Pry was an excellent plant manager here in Goldsboro for, I think he stayed here in Goldsboro for about seven years. He was one of my favorite. He had vision that a lot of people, and he used to talk about a program like this. And that's why he reached out to me and stated it does his heart good to see this implemented. And I want to thank everyone for uh, getting this started. Like I said, my grandson's in this. Uh, he started out in college transfer. He just didn't feel like that was a good fit for him. And he's moved into this program and he is just finding all kinds of education levels that he probably wouldn't have got into a college transfer. So I want to thank Wayne Community College for getting this kicked off. And I know a lot of the manufacturing here in uh, Wayne County and elsewhere We'll be very thankful for this also. And thank you well, all for this. Well, we're glad we can serve your um, grandson out on our campus um, and all the other students that we do serve on our campus. What she was referring to yesterday for those of you um, that are listening in is we had a ribbon cutting for our newly renovated and expanded welding area. And anybody who, um, any citizen of Wayne, Wayne County who wants to come see what we have on campus, our doors are open. All you have to do is call Wayne Community College and we'll be glad to tour you around and show you what great programs that we have and what great opportunities we have um, for them and their family members. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, as I mentioned yesterday also, uh, I did not realize what a jewel we had in Wayne Community College. Uh, I've taken, I don't know how many courses through fire service from Wayne Community College, but you kind of, you know, you, you kind of take it for granted. Uh, you ride by on Wayne Memorial, you look over, and, well, that's a nice looking college. And, and, and until I got, until uh, y'all asked me to serve on the board of trustees at the college, I did not realize what we had. You just, it's one of those things you just take for granted. But, uh, but Wayne Community College is one of the greatest assets that Wayne County has. I mean, we've got a lot of assets, but Wayne Community, uh, it's, it's, it was eye-opening for me to, to, when I got on that board, to, to see what was going on at Wayne Community College. I often say we're the best kept secret in Wayne County. Yeah. You need to come out to campus and see I think I'd be got. remiss if I didn't uh, acknowledge the fact that the chairman of your board, Jeff Hulse, is here. And uh, Mr. Hulse, if you'd like to make any comments uh, with a microphone, is yours. Uh, <laughs> I never seen I'm not being dangerous. <laughs> I've never seen an attorney that didn't like to speak. <laughs> I'd just like to say, you know, uh, and thank you. Uh, the board of any board of trustees of a community college, the most uh, important duty they have is to select the next president of the college. And it was a unanimous decision to ask Dr. Pfeiffer to be our president. And as you've heard from her, you can tell we made the right decision. Yes. But thank you all for your helping us in our plans for this community. We appreciate uh, Vice Chair Acock being on the board. He brings a lot to the our discussions. We have our, a lot of members of our President's Council here. So we're really excited about what's going on in Wayne County and glad to be a part of it. Thank you for letting me speak. Well, one thing that I don't think the public recognize, and that is the volunteer board that you have, because they serve as volunteers and they are instrumental in your uh, improvement of your college as well as Wayne County. So we appreciate that. Please express that appreciation to your board. We're having our retreat Friday and I'll carry that to all the board of trustee members and like and like the commissioners. We're from across the county and the city and try to do a good job representing all the interests. And I just can't resist. It's nice seeing the uh, new tourism director introduce. It's glad to see a little justice in the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at one-liners. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much for the uh, for your work, and uh, we are glad to assist in this effort and look forward to the ribbon cutting. Uh, that said, do I have a motion to approve this uh, agreement? Wait, 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 wait. I start back up. Is the wait. revised uh, agreement that we gave you out this morning. The revised the agreement. Right. Okay. That's what I was going to suggest. Yeah. Yeah, the revised. Okay. okay. So move. So I think we've got about six motions. <laughs> <laughs> the motion is one person to raise it. The motion doesn't matter. The count's what matters. That's right. <laughs> okay, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. Thank well, great. We're glad to hear. I appreciate it. Bye. And if you'll forgive us, we need to get back to campus. We have some yeah. board of trustee meetings. Okay, That's get awesome. going. Thank you. Thank you for being Thank here you. today. All right, I think we've concluded the new business county manager's report. I uh, just want to give you a real quick update. Um, as the board is aware, we approved of doing the uh, street assessment ask uh, for Lane Tree and Eagles Ridge. Uh, those uh, uh, invitations or, or, or letters have been sent out to those residents. And um, so if you start getting phone calls or you start seeing Facebook blown up, uh, what did you be aware that that is out now um, when we've given them to April 1 uh, to get back with us with confirmation of what they would like to do uh, so we can move forward one way or the other. So um, uh, I do want to thank the work that Andrew has done uh, on this. Uh, Kayla and Della uh, in our office just did a great job of getting everything stuffed and ready to go. So just want to thank everybody for the work they did getting it out so quickly. So let, let them know the process that the people are watching. I mean, they get a letter. They get a letter. And, and it'll basically, are you enter, you know, are you the property owner? And Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong. You're the property owner. I'll let Andrew. Sorry, Andrew. I didn't this is legal. <laughs> this is legal. I don't want to. So, um, if you recall, good morning. Um, if you recall, the statute uh, provides that 75% 70, of the residents who make up 75% of the lineal feet in the neighborhood have to be on the petition in order for us to proceed. Um, the current peti petitions were submitted in 2016. As you can imagine, there's been a lot of property transfers since then, especially up in Lane Tree. So what we did, the tax office generated a new, um, not a new petition, but a new spreadsheet. So it has all the current owners on it. Uh, we drafted a letter that outlined exactly what the process is. Um, and the most importantly, the preliminary costs that came back from the engineers. So um, we sent that out. Um, we made it clear that um, we also sent a copy of the petition, um, and it lists the property address, and it has a petition status. It says yes or no. So everybody who um, received that letter can check the petition and, and know if their property is a yes or, or if there's a no. We also included a postcard in there. Um, and it has a box that they can check that says, please add me to the petition or please remove me from the petition. They need to put their property address and then sign that. If it's owned by two people, both people have to sign in order for that to change. If we don't receive anything from the current property owner, then we're going to carry over the petition status from 2016. So what we've done is we've given everyone until April 1st to get those back to us. Once those come back, then um, I'll sit down with our clerk and with our planning director, and we'll go through line by line each property address and determine whether or not they meet the statutory threshold. Um, we hope to do that the week of the 4th, and hopefully we can get an action item back in front of the board at the second meeting in April. That's our current plan. Well, so let me ask you a question. You said that you'll carry over to 2016 survey or whatever mm -hmm. you call the document. So what does that mean for us to, if they do not send it back from that address? So for example, say that um, there's a property, a new property owner that um, acquired property in Lane Tree in 2018. If that's the case and the previous owner signed that petition and that they were on that, right. that property status carries over to the okay. new owner. Because right. um, and, and keep in mind, this is just the first step. So all we're doing right now is recertifying the petition. We wanted to do that before we go back to the board and say, they meet the petition threshold, let's go out for con um, construction bids. Once we come back from, we get our bids and we have a final projected cost, we have to notify everyone again. 
with the final projected costs, including the final assessment. We have two public hearings where anybody can come and, and comment on the cost on the project. And then after the public hearings, we will put before you all a, what's called a preliminary assessment role. Um, anyone can remove or add their name from that petition prior to you passing that preliminary assessment role. If at any time before that preliminary assessment role, it drops before se below 75%, then the project wouldn't move forward. So I don't want the owners to think that right now, just because they're saying yes or no, they're locked in. They're not locked in until we have those two public hearings and they receive final calls of what it's what the project's going to cost. That's what I wanted to make sure we reiterated because I've had several calls already. Um, so if somebody just wants to mark yes right now, just so they can say, okay, move forward with it. Let me see how much it's going to cost, and then I'm going to make a determine later on. They, they can do that. And they can change their mind after right. the fact. And, and they don't incur any costs. So, so, so if they remove, if, if it falls below 75%, they don't incur any costs until you all pass that preliminary assessment roll. So when, when is it that we make sure they understand if the state takes it over, that's the end of the golf carts, the end of the four-wheelers, and... Is that when, is, when? When does that come? About? So part of the process that they did in North Creek and Canterbury is once they the petitions were certified, we held a community meeting. I believe it was at a local church, um, and planning went out there. Everybody went out there, and residents could ask questions from county staff. Any questions they had, um, so we plan on doing that gotcha. both for Eagle Ridge. And then um, Lane Tree, assuming that we they still meet the 75% threshold after eight. Let me back up. I know I said that it, it cuts out the golf course and the four wheelers and all that stuff. I mean, it poss it's this going to be a state maintained highway, Correct. basically. So the rules would apply, the laws would apply inside that subdivision as they do on the secondary roads. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we are also moving forward with Eagle Ridge as well. Both of them at the same time. Okay. So mailers went out to Lane Tree. There are 342 lots up there, and then at Eagle Ridge, there's 32. So obviously the Eagle Run, Eagle Ridge one is a little bit easier to certify than the 342. Okay. When did you send the letters out? Last Thursday, yeah, last I believe. Thursday. That's when they went out. And you said the deadline is April 1st. April 1st. Mm -hmm. That's what we put on on the letter. Um, I, I don't think we're going to probably get to it until probably the week of the fourth. So that was just the initial deadline since to get to get this moving. But obviously, if the board wanted to extend that out, we could we could do that as well. So was Eagle Ridge in this in the part before, or did they did they have a survey sent out before as well or not? They were they had a petition, yes, sir. So that the, the applies to them as well, as far as the mm -hmm. look at it. I'm far as the, you know, they were on it in 2016. They don't send it back. They're still on it now. Same rules, gotcha. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I just make sure they were they had sent it. And it's my understanding if you get these uh, letters back and you're below the 75 percent, then that is going to kill that project for. We would for, bring it back to you for consideration, yes, sir. For but consideration. It, yes, sir. Um, and then we would have to take action to. You would make a determination that they don't. Meet they don't. The threshold. They, they don't meet that guideline. Um, okay. One one thing I did want to mention, and I forgot. Joel, our public affairs, has put a website. Um, it's WayneGov.com backslash assessments, or you can scroll to the planning department and click on street assessments. Um, it has a summary of the process. It has the statute um, that applies to this. It has the Wayne County policy that was pre that was um, passed in 2015. It has a copy of the letter that was mailed out to the communities, and it has a copy of the current petition. So I will say, if any property owner for whatever reason didn't get something in the mail, please visit that website or call pl the planning department, and we can get them some information on if they want to remo remove their name, add their name, or if they just have questions. But um, also on that page is a list of frequently asked questions that we put together that kind of address some of the common questions that we got the first time around. 
Like one example is what happens if I sell my home during the 10 year uh, repayment period? That was a big question. So that's a good source of information. Um, if someone they did not receive a mailer or if they want to add or remove their name, they can contact the planning department um, and they will have that form that they can fill out and, and make an adjustment to their property as well. But everything is listed online too, so that's a good source of information. That's the question that I was going to ask. Um, I've been riding around with a package in my car for like two weeks now. Sometimes it's hard to get by the post office. It's hard to get stamps. It's, you know what I mean? It's just a, it's right. somewhat an inconvenience now for most people. Um, I don't know. I mean, the deadline, you know, what's that, two and a half weeks mm -hmm. that you're giving someone to send it back. You don't know. Someone could be on vacation. It's spring break for a lot of people. It's, you know what I mean? People vacationing and stuff like that for kids, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so you might not get some back in time. Um, and then, you know, the online process, you know, most people do, I pay all my bills online, I do everything online, you know. Um, I understand we have the information online, but why you don't have a system that a person can sign in online and say, this is, we are saying yes or we're saying no, that would make that process a lot easier as far as getting the information back, get it, a lot, get it back a lot faster and everything right. else, instead of just saying mail it back because you know, our mail system is running slow as well also. So it's right. a lot going on within that to say two and a half weeks have it back in. So I think that that should be something that should be looked at immediately before saying April 1st is the deadline, whether we extend the deadline or whatever, or try to update the online process as well to get them the information so they can fill it out online. Yeah, I, I can talk to Joel and, and see if there is some sort of online process. I, I think our concern would be whether or not we know how, how do we match up the the you know the data entry to make sure that it is that property owner I, I don't know how that would work um, I will say the mailers that we sent out are postcards and they already have a stamp on it so all the person has to do is just sign it put it right back in the mailbox so they don't even have to pay for uh, mailing for postage on it well, that's why we did postcards since the you know the uh, stamps for those are a little bit cheaper, but we've already um, prepaid them, so they just have to sign it and send it right back. But I, I can tell if, I mean, if they want to call into the manager office or planning and indicate that they would like to remove their name, um, I know we did that the first time around in North Creek, so I think that would be acceptable here. We would just, we have spreadsheets together, we can document that. So. Okay. Any other if questions? If that's easier for them, they could, they could just call the manager's office or the planning department. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. Okay, thank you. Yep. That's all I have. Okay, next item on the agenda is county manager's report. Oh, yes. That was, that was, that yeah, was it. That was it. Yeah. That was it. Yes, sir. My goodness, it was so long, I forgot where we were and began. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Board of Commissioners' comments. Um, Commissioner Foster. Uh, no comments. Commissioner Barbara Aycock. Well, I want to congratulate all the women who work for Wayne County because March is Women's Month. And that has been oversighted, and I want to thank all the ladies and everything and all of the women of Wayne County because we all work very hard, and I think we're a very vital source to everything we do. Of course, every month, as far as I'm concerned, is Women's <laughs> Month. So thank you, ladies, for jobs well done. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. <laughs> well, and I agree. Thank, thank goodness for ladies. Yes. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Williams. Uh, yes. Um, I, did, I didn't intend on talking about this today, um, but the cat's out of the bag. Um, the county will be having its summer employment program. And I just want to thank uh, Ginger Amore, HR. Um, I want to thank all our commissioners for supporting the program and um, the college as well. Um, you know, it's, it's a great thing when we can start to um, give our, our kids and our community an opportunity where they can grow from within. And, and so I thank this uh, commission um, for just supporting that program. Um, on another note, I also wanted to talk about some of uh, the gun violence here in Wayne County. That's a topic that has not been at, um, talked about. You know, we just lost um, a young man um, whose family is very pertinent to this community, the Williams family. Um, you know, and 
you know, it's just to the point now where we're seeing uh, young people and gun violence. It's just a terrible thing, and it's, it's like we're just becoming numb to it here in this county, and we need some help. It's, you know, the county commissioners, you know, we do a lot behind the scenes. We need partners that are going to um, get creative and talk about this cancer that's here in this community. And we have to save our young people. We have to save our families from this harm. And we can do it. But we have to have things in place um, for our young people. And I think this summer employment program is a plus to help that. But we need many more things as well. So I'm, I'm calling out to the community to think outside the box. Um, and let's work on some things that can change the dynamics here. Because if we want a healthy county, this right here with the gun violence, with the violence here is not help, helping the county. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Uh, Hartz. I've got some good news. Um, the COVID rate is down to 2% in the, in the uh, UNC system. And we only have four COVID pa pa patients in Wayne Memorial right now, which is good. And the hospital is encouraging vis visitation again. So, folks, this is a good thing. Yes. You know? But on the same note is that we still, people that need the boosters, get your boosters. Okay? It's still out there. Just because it's going down doesn't mean it's going to disappear. And that's it. Okay, great. Mr. Gurley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we, um, Commissioner Horace, said we have a uh, Highway 7042, I 42 meeting tomorrow uh, in Smithfield, and the program, as about every other pro every other month uh, or every other meeting program, is on flood resilience. Uh, since we're in District 4 and live in Eastern North Carolina, District 4, District 2, which is down toward the coast. Uh, and we'll have those um, those people present for the, um, for that. The uh, we also have a uh, TAC meeting on um, uh, Thursday morning, mm -hmm. like it is, uh, uh, to discuss our local um, projects, which we won't be a whole lot to because we're still waiting on DOT uh, funding for our major projects. I talked to Luther with. Um, uh, Wayne County's uh, Wayne County Engineer DOT. They are starting the uh, paving project first of May. Um, uh, excuse me, the uh, <coughs> first of April. Uh, the crossing of the Southern Wayne uh, Water District line down by the uh, fairgrounds. They'll be boring under um, 117 South. At Legion Lake, uh, sometime the first week in May, uh, and then that project's going to take uh, well on in past the the fair. Uh, I talked to our engineer, and he said that they would be suspending work during the uh, fair process. Uh, uh, the last thing I've got is we have uh, on behalf of the um, uh, board of elections, uh, we have uh, secured the Maxwell Center for. Um, Early voting in the general election year, or uh, general election, uh, which will be in November or be October the 18th or something, whatever, the two weeks prior to November the 8th. Anyway, uh, we have two rooms that we've uh, we've acquired for that, and that's where we will be uh, doing early voting uh, uh, from now on. What I understand. So, uh, that being said, that's all I got. Okay, good enough. Commissioner Aycock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that's Rep. Along with some of the rest of the commissioners, uh, attended the legislature breakfast at Wayne Community College yesterday uh, for the college to kind of, you know, lay out, you know, what they would like to uh, get from the state, and uh, had a had a had a real good breakfast. Uh, also. Uh, while we were at the college, I uh, attended the ribbon cutting for the new welding facility, along with several of the other commissioners. Uh, uh, great program, uh, well attended by county officials, city officials, uh, 
citizens of the county, business owners, a uh, great turnout. Uh, also, I had the pleasure, uh, me and the other Commissioner Acott had the pleasure of going to Belfast Fire Department Saturday night for their presentation, their award presentation. Uh, had a great meal, good fellowship. You know, thank you all for the invitation. Uh, also, this coming Saturday night, uh, the first responder, this is a new pro, a new thing that's going on in the county, a new, new venture. Uh, first responder appreciation banquet at the Maxwell Center. Uh, I understand that uh, they have having already, uh, all the sponsorships have been sold. Uh, I think they were, have planned for about 700. All of the, ten, all of the tickets have been sold, so we're uh, looking for a great, great turnout for that. Also, uh, Saturday, the Nahana Fire Department is having their annual barbecue and chicken supper. Uh, I'd like for everyone to come out and eat with them. Uh, starts at four and lasts until the food runs out. And let's see. I think that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I got one more thing for you. Uh, uh, the Farmer Association meeting is tonight. Yeah, yep, I, I had it down, didn't uh, The Farmer Association meeting is tonight at Belfast. Uh, any of the commissioners that would like to attend, uh, they try to eat about 7 and the meeting is 7.30. Uh, and you're welcome to attend. Okay. <clears throat> Folks, I, I, I was really impressed yesterday with the new welding center. I mean, I cannot stress how much of an improvement our, our welding center is. And you'd have to have been there the before and after. And we actually need to get, Craig, we need to get the before and the after. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they had uh, 11 stations and they were dreary as I don't know what. They looked like something from the Dark <coughs> Ages. <laughs> and now it is a modern update very inclusive uh, facility. Uh, it, it almost makes you want to go and, and be a part of that. I, I really was impressed with the computer programs that they had and the modules where you actually begin training on a computer. It's kind of like a, a, a game uh, on your computer. Uh, and Representative Jimmy Dixon showed us his skills of actually welding uh, on that that module. But it was it was very interesting, and I applaud the community college uh, for going ahead and getting that uh, completed. Uh, I don't know what the next phase is, but I understand we are repurposing some of that uh, existing building for other uh, expansions. So great things going on at Wayne Community College, uh, and I, I really appreciate it. And I think Wayne County is going to see some benefits from that. Folks, if, if you are in a low-paying job and you want to improve your status in life, go visit Wayne Community College, and they'll show you a pathway either through grants or other ways to make it possible for you to change your station in life. But you've got to make the first step. You've got to go out there and investigate it and find out those programs that are available. So with that said, uh, anything further? Uh, we are now going into closed session. I would entertain a motion that we go into closed session. So I move. All right, we have a motion on the floor to go into closed session. For, for the purpose of? Consulting with your counsel to have attorney client privilege. All right, for that purpose, uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, we're now in closed session. Can we? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we, we've had all of our business of the day, and so I hereby adjourn.